Welcome to Toastmasters Bay to Bay, where we feature speakers from San Francisco to Monterey. Happy holidays. My name is Tony, the Toastmaster Del Leon, and I am your Toastmaster or your host for the show. I am very thankful to be a Toastmaster. The skills I have learned in Toastmasters, I feel, are gifts that can be shared. So this holiday season, try out some of your Toastmaster skills. Tell a joke, lead a prayer, make a toast, or coach someone with their interview skills if they're looking for a job, or host a TV show. <laughs> I encourage my fellow Toastmasters to share this gift with everyone. And this holiday season, as we get together with our friends and co-workers, let's sneak Toastmasters into our conversations. If they ask you what's happening, what's new, tell them about that new speech you're working on, or that great speech, or how fun it was to be in the studio audience of this show. And for those of you who do not know a Toastmaster, feel free to grab pen and paper, for I will give you some information later on at the end of this show. On this episode, you'll hear some of these gifts. You'll hear a prepared speech, who will be received with a gift of an evaluation, and then we will see table topic speakers tackle table topics or unprepared questions and answers. We also have a roll-in of a club featured of in, in District 4. Our first speaker has always enjoyed public speaking. Since becoming a Toastmaster, she has learned what makes a good speech. She works as a hypnotherapist and uses her Toastmaster skills to help her clients overcome their fears and become confident speakers. The title of her speech is The Three P's. Please welcome Cynthia Beck, The Three P's, Cynthia Beck. Thank you, Tony. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. My heart was beating like a cell phone on vibrate. I knew this moment would come, but somehow I was suddenly in denial. It was my turn to speak at the Lions Club High School Speech Contest. And Mr. Brebner, my English teacher, was using his bony elbow to get me out of the chair. I was nervous like I never thought I'd be not only because it was a speech contest, but because I was going to San Domenico School for Girls. And most of the people in the audience were from the boys' school. They not only represented my competition, but they were the dating pool for the junior prom. <laughs> I did not want to blow it. And George Brown was impeccable. He had just given his speech and sat down with a lot of confidence and a lot of arrogance. I rose to the podium. My knees didn't give out. All of a sudden, I said, you'll send us to war, but you won't let us vote. And I was in the zone. Everything I'd practiced in my English class just came right into one moment. The audience disappeared, and I was into my speech. Before I knew it, it was time to sit down. I gave George Brandt a glance, and he looked at me, impressed and a little nervous. I've learned a lot about how to make a winning speech since that, t that speech there. And I've learned three important things, the three Ps, preparation, presence, and practice. So let's talk about P number one, preparation. In order to prepare a well-crafted speech, you need three things, C, E, O. You're the boss. You're the CEO. CEO stands for content, entertainment, and organization. Your content is your message, what you have to say, what you bring to the subject. If you're representing your company, it's about your product. Your content should be you. But it's got to be entertaining. Your audience has to have fun with you. So start with a story. Use a quote. Say something interesting. Don't just give me facts and figures. Make it fun for me to listen to you. That's the E. And then, of course, there's organization. 
a speech has to be well structured. I love Robin Williams. His stream of consciousness, consciousness just keeps me laughing and laughing and laughing. But after he's done, I don't remember a thing that he said. <laughs> His speeches are not organized in a way that people can remember. So if you're going to write a well-organized speech, what I like to do is write my opening and then three points that I want to make, and then my close. I write my outline first, and then I expand on those three points. And I like to make each speech expandable. I can give this speech in five minutes or five hours. <laughs> depending upon how many tips I put in under each segment. So organization is absolutely key to help your audience remember what you've said. Now we're back to our P's. The second P is presence. You gotta fill up the room. You have to have a connection with your audience members. Your presence is about your emotional content. And what I like to do is kind of collect myself before I start to speak. I have to be present to me first. If my head is spinning and the butterflies are taking over, I'm just going to be flighty. So I'm present to myself. And then I look at one audience member. And I can speak to that audience member the entire time. I don't have to dart around. Because if I'm talking to this person, and I'm present to him, and he's getting my message, everybody else in the audience is getting it too. You have to be present when you're speaking. And what's the third P? Practice. <laughs> How many times have you gone to a club meeting where somebody threw together their speech in the car in the parking lot and thought you couldn't tell? There are some of us who are pretty big talkers that can get away with that. But for the most part, it's really an insult to your audience to come to have them listen to you and you didn't do anything to prepare or practice what you've prepared. So you really have to practice your gestures, practice your talk, practice your opening, practice your close, practice with your microphone, practice in front of your mirror. But at least at Toastmasters, practice once. <laughs> Give us a break. <laughs> practice is really key. So there's your three Ps. Preparation, presence, and practice. So. How well do those things work when I use them in my Lions Club speech contest? You might be wanting to know. It was the end of the contest. They'd given out the second and third place awards. And both George Brown and I were still in our seats. And I figured, OK, I'll practice more next time. The audience was clapping. And George Brown stood up. And I just thought, OK, all of a sudden, Mr. Bremner was hitting me again with his elbow. Get up, get up, you won. I was shocked, but you should have seen the look on George's face. <laughs> and after the speech contest, he was the consummate gentleman. He was very kind, and he came up, kind of flirted with me. And he said, we'll both go away winners tonight if you'll do the honor of joining me for your junior prom. Aww. Aww. Mr. Toastmaster. Cynthia, people want to know, what club do you belong to? And I, I'm a proud pro, pro master. We meet at Mimi's in Foster City on Thursday mornings at 7.30. I heard you made Toastmasters history once. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about it. I did. I was the first woman Toastmaster in the state of Colorado. I couldn't get any speech classes my first year in college. And so in 1974, they had just let women in. And I went to a Toastmasters club. And all those guys were really happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. We'll have to visit you at the Toastmasters club. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our evaluator tonight for Cynthia's speech comes from Blue Cube Toastmasters. And recently, he competed at a speech evaluation contest at the area level, and he won. So it's our pleasure to have our evaluator, Bum Young Choi. Please welcome Bum Young Choi. <laughs> Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and Cynthia, what a great speech. I liked how you started with your Lions Club speech. 
and you kind of paused there, and you talked about how we can deliver a good speech. Then you brought it back to your introduction and sort of finished your story. What a great way to engage your audience. I was thinking, is she going to talk about what happened? And you definitely answered my question. Wow, she won. That's great, because she definitely brought a, uh, delivered an awesome speech. Second point that I wanted to point out is that you gave us those three Ps. And I know when I go home, I'll remember those three Ps. And even with the first P, you had the CEO. And you have all these buzzwords for me to take home with and remember what they are. So before I go to sleep, I remember three Ps and CEO. Tomorrow morning, I'll think about three Ps and CEO. Before I deliver a speech, I think about that as well. But one point, one, one area that I was hoping that, that you could improve on is when you're giving us this, the result of this Lions Club speech, I thought you could add more animation. You could add more gesture, or you could have more vocal variety. For example, you mentioned this, get up, get up, you won. You could have said, get up, get up, you won. What are you doing? So you could have added some enthusiasm there. Also, when you are thinking that you will practice and you'll do better next time, you could have really shown that you're very shy about it. Um, maybe I'll do better next time. But other than that, I thought it was beautifully organized and well delivered. I will remember those three Ps. And with that, I would like to give a control back to Mr. Tosmas. Thank you, Bamyang. Now it's time for our roll-in feature where we look at a club in District 4. The club we're going to feature tonight and visit is an advanced club called Next Step Toastmasters. Let's have a visit. At Next Step, we believe that anyone joining our club would like to take themselves to their own personal growth and to a higher level than what they're at. This is a person that's seeking to go higher in their advancement of speaking. Basically what they're looking for is a little bit more of a tougher standard. Evaluation is what helps you get to a higher level of speaking and leadership. When the speaker comes in and says, I want to be good enough to win international contests, we give them the honest, direct feedback and what we believe will take him to that level. Before the speech started, I asked the money, so now what do you want out of this? Why, what, what do you, why are you repeating this and what do, you, what do you think are your strengths and weaknesses? So he gave me his uh, impressions and I promised, okay, I'll do my best. And here's what I observed in his uh, speech. Kind of, so that the flip side to that would have been the structure where it lacked a clear beginning, a body, and the end. I heard a lot about you, I learned a lot about you today, but I thought that it could have a really clear, concise. What I really liked about your speech was the stories came from your heart. The story about your sister, the story about your Toastmasters journey, as I would have expected from a competent speaker like yourself. But the reason why you're here is to help you get to the next level. So I'm going to share with you a few things that I hope you can use in your next speeches. The very first line, very first opening. I thought that you had some really good statistics. What I was missing a little bit is the personal connection and some stories. I thought so I thought personalizing that a little bit more might have drawn us all in a little bit. You spent a lot of time identifying the problem, but I was missing a little bit more on the solution. Have you watched American Idol? Yes. Well, I'm going to play the part of Simon. So buckle your seatbelts. You have to be able to accept the input. And, and it's genuine. It's sincere. It's, it's how we feel when we hear your speech. And sometimes our perception of ourselves is not exactly how the audience views us. So the, the main ingredient is being willing to accept the input to become better. So take those and tie it into this message that you want to deliver to us. Try that next time, and I think the more you're able to do that, it can be a little painful at times, but it'll be worth it to the next level. But otherwise, I thought that you're at the 
the right place to help uh, help get to that next level. Madam Toastmaster. Welcome back. Our next segment of the show is one of my favorites. Tonight we're going to feature table topics where Toastmaster members answer questions with very little preparation. Banner, banner on the wall. And our magic banner tonight is Catherine Pratt, who is the most creative speaker of them all. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Table topics is that special part of the meeting that helps us develop our impromptu speaking skills. And there are a lot of situations in our everyday lives where we might have to answer questions and start speaking without any preparation. Table topics gives us a chance to practice that. The way we structure table topics is I, the powerful banner, will invite an audience member up to answer the question. And they'll answer it in one to two minutes. Now my gifts to you tonight are questions that go along with the holiday theme. And it seems that the holiday shopping season starts early and earlier every year. Did you take advantage of Black Friday and Cyber Monday shopping deals? Or do you plan to leave shopping for a different time? To answer that question, I'd like to invite Setha Yim from Tea Toasters in Menlo Park. Thank you, Magic Banner. I did take advantage of Cyber Monday because I wanted to be early this time for Christmas shopping. And I wanted to do that because every year, I, when I never take advantage of Cyber Monday, the gifts were always late and I would always do everything last minute and things would be more expensive, unfortunately. But this time I decided to take advantage of Cyber Monday. I bought a lot of things, a lot of, on discount. and. One disadvantage of doing that was that things were coming late. For instance, last week I decided to take advantage of be early on shopping and I, I bought a lot of things from Old Navy, 30% off discount. How great is that? And I got that for my nieces, my nephews, my cousins, and 30 presents were under my belt that I had to buy and tackle. Well. It's going to come on December 23rd, which <laughs> would take a longer time for me to wrap presents. And I thought it was really early, and I, was, I didn't want to go in and avoid all of the traffic and all of the rush. But this time, unfortunately, it's still going to be a little late even going online. But my advice to everyone is go a little bit earlier than that. I mean, you're going to get a lot of discounts and, and everything, but just don't go later after Cyber Monday because everything would be extremely late. Thank you. Magic Banner. Excellent advice. You know, they say it's better to give than to receive. Which charity or cause would you like to give money or help to this holiday season? And to answer that question, I'd like to summon Elliot Mao from High Spirits Toastmasters. Which charity, which charity would I like to most give to during this Christmas season? I think probably the most underappreciated giver of all have got to be mothers. <laughs> How about that? Because I'll tell you the truth is behind the Santa Claus scene, we know who the true Santa Claus is. They're the person who has to budget for whatever, all the kids are involved, and the husband too. Remember, he's a big kid. So in orchestrating this, I just got to remember one special story that is just so charitable in the spirit of giving. When I, as a mother, was wrapping all those presents up, my little boy who was six years old, he was saying, what are you doing? And I said, well, you're old enough to know that there's no Santa Claus. I'm the Santa Claus. This is reality check there too. So his eyes lit up and he disappeared. And then on Christmas day, I saw under the Christmas tree, all these little funny wrapped up things, you know. There was one for his sister, and we open up, it was a used eraser. <laughs> it was his. And then for his sister, wrapped it up, it was a half-eaten candy bar. <laughs> but the best present of all was just this mushy thing in a paper bag. And when I opened it up, it was his favorite blanket, what they call it, velveteen stuffed animal. And 
to me, that was the most charitable thing on this kid's world. When I received it and know how important it was, I said to myself, mothers in the world, this is the time to know that you have received the best gift of all. You're the biggest charity, but your children are the biggest giver. This is what I remember. What do you think? Toast master. From Thanksgiving until New Year's Day, celebrations this time of year always seem to revolve around food. What is your favorite holiday food? And how does it remind you of that time of year? To answer this question, I'll ask Solomon Salim Salimi from True Talking Toastmasters. Thank you, Magic Banner. Uh, my favorite holiday food is, let's go back this past Thanksgiving. I was in Vegas with my family, and my favorite food out of all the foods, you will never guess it, cactus. Fresh <laughs> cut from the desert of my aunt's house, brought, marinated with a little bit of lime, some salt, left there for about 30 minutes, taken back out and eaten. What I love about this and why it reminds me of our family is because we're all amazing inside, but sometimes there's some little thorns on the outside. And if you're brave enough and you have the courage to go in there and check out what's inside past the thorns, you can find out that there's delicious, nutritious food in there waiting to be enjoyed and digested and so great for your body. If we're all into organic foods, this is a thousand times better than organic foods. It's wild. <laughs> I'm a little wild. <laughs> so I recommend go out somewhere, whether it's Thanksgiving, whether it's Christmas, and find something amazing out there because it will be just like a member of your family that they might be a little difficult at the beginning, but once taken a time and treasured and opened up, you'll be amazed of how great it will be inside, just like every member of your family. Magic Banner. Holiday traditions seem to vary from place to place and even from family to family. What was one of your, or is one of your favorite, holiday traditions? Robert Tang from Pro Toasties. Thank you, Magic Banner, Catherine. Holidays are nice because as the Table Topic Master Catherine said, it brings out the traditions. What is a holiday without traditions? Well, for the Thanksgiving, Christmas holiday, I'm in a unique position. Even now as an older person, but especially as a youngster, my birthday happens to land on the end of Thanksgiving, or the end of November, and it's a tradition with family members and friends for me to get a supersized present that includes both my birthday and my Christmas present. <laughs> I, I like it because I like the fact that I have a nice supersized present, whether it could be a little envelope that has some supersized bills, or it could be a large box with a large train set or a Lego set. That's my own personal tradition uh, when it comes to the holidays at the end of the year. But then I feel a little bit sad because during Christmas, I don't get anything. Uh, but what I do get are presents from family members or friends who forgot my birthday <laughs> and decided to make it up on Christmas. So at least I get something on Christmas as I get a Christmas present, but without the birthday attached to it. So that's my personal tradition during the holidays at the end of the season. Madam Ba, uh, Table Topic Master. What, one thing about Bay Area winters, we never have any snow. How do you feel about having a holiday season without snow? I'd like to invite Birgit Starmans from Evening Stars, Next Step, and Pro Toasties. One of the reasons that I moved to California is so that I would not have to shovel snow. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Southern Virginia, and I'm originally from Germany, so there was always a lot of snow. The problem with that is, some of those areas are not used to snow. 
I lived in Washington, D.C. before I moved out here. And right before I moved out here was the first snowstorm ever. Now, they had all of these snow removal equipments and things like that, where basically they would run around, around the street with them up. They wouldn't even try to get rid of the snow. And then all of a sudden, we had snow about this high that I had to shovel. So I was really happy to get to California, where I don't have to shovel snow. I'm OK with the Christmas trees without snow. And if I really want snow, then I can always drive up to Tahoe. Thank you, Magic Banner. as I've enjoyed giving them to you. As I fade back into the banner, I'd like to return control of the meeting to our Toastmaster, Tony DeLeon. Thank you, Magic Banner, Catherine. What a wonderful job. Let's give that magical <laughs> banner a big hand. I hope you enjoyed the gifts of Toastmasters tonight. As I said earlier, hopefully you grab some pen and paper if you don't know a Toastmaster, so I'm going to give you some information. We're part of District 4 Toastmasters, which runs from San Francisco to Monterey. So we have a website. It's www.d4tm.org. And if you live outside the area, we have the Toastmasters International website, which is toastmasters.org. I encourage everyone to get together and talk Toastmasters especially my fellow Toastmasters, because we have a special gift. Not only do we get to speak better, but I believe we get to get to know one another better. So it's very special that we all spread the word, because Toastmasters is where leaders are made. So please visit a Toastmasters club near you. So once again, practice your skills. Tell a joke, lead a prayer, make a toast, or coach someone. Or better yet, host a TV show. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> Please come on up.